Sudan is facing a severe food crisis due to ongoing conflict, leaving many people, especially children, suffering from malnutrition and starvation. Now, the situation is dire, with children appearing younger than their actual age due to severe malnutrition. Aid workers are struggling to reach those in need due to infrastructure damage and violence as well. Now, the conflict has also led to widespread violence and human rights abuses, with the Rapid Support Forces, uh, that's the RSF group, attacking villages and killing civilians, including women and children. But despite international efforts to negotiate a peace agreement, the situation remains complex and volatile, causing immense suffering among the population. Global attention and collective action is necessary to address this crisis and support the people of Sudan. Now, joining me to speak more on this development is David Matsanga, African Affairs Analyst from Geneva, Switzerland. Hello, David. Good evening, and thank you so much for joining us at this time. Good evening. Thank you very much in Lagos. How is the weather? The weather here is also fantastic. Good the weather evening. here is fantastic as well. Thank you for asking. All right. So now after all said, David, what are the most pressing humanitarian needs in Sudan at the moment? First of all, it is sad that Africa is watching one nation going down. It is sad that Africa has not put enough efforts to call upon the international community and donors to come and help this great nation from sinking and being wiped out from the surface of the map of Africa. We need the needs for humanitarian uh, catastrophe that is unfolding. We need corridors of pass passage. We need to reach the vulnerable people. The food must reach the vulnerable people. The, the, the commanders, both generals, must be held responsible for not allowing roads and channels and the passage of humanitarian needed uh, if, uh, relief that can reach the millions and millions of people that are stranded that have been running for one and a half years now. Okay, so... Uh... Now you're saying that, uh, if I heard you correctly, what you're saying is uh, what Sudan actually needs at the moment is, in humanitarian aid, is actually food. And you also talked about, you know, the generals being held accountable. You know, that's from both warring parties. Now, we know that uh, the war has created conditions approaching famine. And the actions of the RSF has actually hindered humanitarian efforts. So what would become the impact on civilian populations, especially those that have been displaced already? It is genocide. There is no other word that can explain what is going on in Sudan right now. It's genocide. And we have got to be very frank and honest to these generals that enough is enough. We cannot be operating with coated uh, hands, coated, uh, uh, you know, invitations we must put a deterrent what is the deterrent now we need to tell the generals if you don't come we have to take action the united nations security council should stop playing hide and seek this question of hide and seek by some members of the united nations security council who are part and the part of the problem of sudan must stop i am speaking as a pan-african and I'm very, very angered that a delegation can arrive in Geneva, sit in the hotel, drink, eat, relax. When people are dying in Sudan, when women and the children are, are, are lacking food, shelter, and other things, it is sad. Therefore, my suggestion is a deterrent. If you don't put deterrent, these two generals will not arrive on the table. They are my friends, but enough is enough. We have reached a point where we cannot go on working in backwards, forward. No, let's put deterrence. One of the deterrents is to issue warrants of arrest. Yes, that whenever they step anywhere, they should be broke. Because we are not going to have people die, people killed. We want to have access to humanitarian Corridors where people can deliver food. You can't deliver food in Darfur. You can't deliver food anywhere in Sudan 
The fighting continues. Uh, exactly. No ceasefire. I, I was actually going to, you know, uh, speak on that. You know, 10.7 million people displaced. You know, uh, some of the challenges, uh, you know, provi of providing the humanitarian aid uh, have been stated as limited infrastructure, including roads, bridges, and also storage facilities and the likes. Now, with roads blocked and an ongoing violence, how can vital aid get to those who need it the most? First of all, let's even put a no fly zone. There is no, let's put a no fly zone. Why are Americans delaying to put a no fly zone in Darfur? We need a no fly zone in Sudan because we no longer pass there anyway. We don't want people to fight using anything so that only prescribed planes can deliver food to areas which are not passable. The areas that cannot be reached can be delivered by food, by, by planes hired by international agencies. The biggest problem that we have, my sister and fellow Africans watching me, we have a very poor Pan-African organization called African Union. Very poor in management, very poor in analysis, very poor in even making sure that food, this decision of a peace process. They don't talk the truth. I talk the truth. The people who are here in Geneva City are the same people who are selling arms to both sides to go and fight. Africa must speak up its mind today. Africa must wake up and say it's stand. We are not going to keep quiet and get our people killed. Sudan was one of the progressive states. It has now been reduced. On the north, there is Libya. France has divided Libya into two parts of Baghazi and the Tripoli. We have watched. We are watching all this. There is an army, standing army, in around the Nile corridor. Whose army is this? Who gives them money? Two countries, some of them are here uh, in, in Geneva. They give money out to these groups. They are buying while people are dying in Sudan. They are looking for advantage of where they can do trade, where they can take oil, where can they sell diamonds and gold, timber, ivory. All these things are taking place. And time has come for us in the world, in Africa. We have a new a situation where we have to talk the truth and tell the truth. We have had enough. All right. Well, well David, uh, quite passionate, uh, you know, uh, hearing you talk uh, about uh, the happenings in Sudan. But on one hand, uh, it, it's one thing to actually get aid across to Sudan, uh, especially those uh, those areas that have been, uh, you know, locked uh, or landlocked. But then how can these aid be protected from being misused or even exploited, especially by the warring parties themselves? And how do we ensure that it reaches those who need it the most? It comes on with the United Nations. We have got poor mediators. We have got very double standard mediators. Some of them have taken sides already and they want to come and mediate. Some of them don't have the capability to mediate. None of them has approached these journals directly or informally. We need two ways, formal and informal. You cannot win a war. You cannot bring peace if you don't have two channels. If you have one channel of diplomacy calling people in Geneva to sit and eat and drink, that, that can't work. Let's have two channels, informal and formal. The informal people who know these journals can approach them and tell them the situation is bad, is going to be bad, and there are consequences for this. Hmm. The Sudanese government itself is saying we cannot, we cannot come to that place. Because there is United Arab Emirates, which is part and parcel of the problem of Africa of late. And let's be very honest. I don't need to go to, uh, to Dubai. I don't need Dubai visa that you can refuse to give me if you don't want. But I'm going to tell the truth to Africans. We can't be killed because you have money. Why is United Arab Emirates trying to divide Africa? Look at Libya. They are part of the, the problem of General Khalifa Haftar. I have started research to the entire Nairobi. Nobody can defeat me on that, even if I'm going to die 
down in the grave. I will tell you who is behind the mess in that region. Okay, why about are we David. arming? Yes, why are we arming? Let me make my point. Why are we arming groups? And then you come in Geneva, you want to pretend to sit on the table. The generals said we cannot come. I'm sorry. Because the people arming, buying arms for one side are there. All right, talking about making messes, David, uh, there, there are kids, uh, you know, uh, in therapeutic feeding centers, and I'm talking about the um, starvation and malnutrition going on in Sudan at the moment. And from what we hear, or from what we hear, uh, they look like they're four or five months old, even though they're even older. Now, can you paint a picture or explain to us what the severity of malnutrition in the four is and also its, its consequences on these children? It has reached a breaking point, my sister. Is a breaking point. We can't. End. There is nothing to describe what is taking place in Sudan. The people have suffered. The children. There are people who have never even slept for one night. They are on the run all the time from all these in marauding armies from the RSF and from the, the army which is left, which was left to be part and the pass of the government. Let's first of all for a peace process to go. Solutions one. Let's get the good things out to get food inside. The good and the bad things on the side, which we have begun doing of small things, what it is, where can we be held, what can this process do you see? Let's get the thing done very properly. Let's get some people out. And I have told, I've written several letters to the United Nations Secretary General. I've written several letters to the Secretary General of the Chairman of African Union, Dr. Muhammad Faki. He has my copies and I can show them to you. They are down here. Plenty of them. I came with them. I've written letters to Igat. I've written letters to presidents around the region telling them there is a problem here. We are not sincerely speaking. We are coming on this table with double standards. The geopolitical situation of Saudi Arabia Qatar, United Arab Emirates, Iran. Now we have Iran coming in, wanting to invest in the port and the ports around the Red Sea. We as Africans must stand and be non-aligned and say we are interested in peace. We are not interested in any mercantile capitalism or any type of conflict merchants who are coming into Africa to take away our minerals and to take away oil while people children are dying children as far as five months how will shall we reach god where well, shall we sit in front of god and tell god what did we do at least for me i will do one thing i've talked and i've talked and I told the world there is a very serious problem in sudan the two generals must be put on reprimand Okay. That if they don't attend some of these meetings, mm. they should be take, action all right, should all right, be taken. All right, yes. Mr. Matanga. Now we're still talking about you know the women and children uh, and the impact of the conflict on them. Now we know that more than three hundred people have been killed from you know uh, the cholera epidemic in Sudan at the moment. Now Egypt has tightened its borders. Uh, we would like for you to tell us: Is there any hope for relief or even humanitarian aid? especially when it comes to medical supplies with, you know, all these compounding issues coming up? It, the, the only way is to close the airspace and you and to take action by closing entire airspace and telling the generals that should one of the planes of humanitarian nature be shot down, they should be looked for and be taken why are we looking for generals up to now? We are looking for some people. Why can't we get these ones who are all the time in their comfort, in, in comfort zone, in Darfur, in Yala, in Port Sudan? They are there. They are traveling all over Africa, trying to create a, a, a posture of good people. Why are people five months old? Children are dying. I am not happy and I'm, not, I'm sorry at my 
age, I cannot keep quiet. Uh, all right, Mr. 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 Matanga, let's, let's go back to the Geneva talks. Uh, you mentioned uh, something about it earlier. Now, we know that the country's military... Uh, has boycotted the Geneva talks. I'm sure that's one of the reasons why you're asking for them to be apprehended. But speak to us on the challenges facing diplomatic efforts, you know, to restart talks and the impact of the military's boycott. I, I think <laughs> the, the, my sister, the most uh, this depressing thing is that one of the sides arrive here in the hotel next year and they don't go to the press to the, to, the, to the invite they had come for in Geneva. And you see them eating breakfast. You see them eating everything in the morning as if they came to, to dine and enjoy. That is a very bad state for the United Nations Secretary General and the people of America who should actually bring about a muscle. The United Nations Security Council itself diplomatically must pressurize the groups and give incentives to the peace process. Look, I have told people one of the ways to remove this, to begin this peace process, is to drop warrants of arrest against Bashir. The side in Sudan that has Bashir, I'm not going to disclose here, but I know where Bashir is. Mm -hmm. wow. the, the side that has Bashir is the side that has a bargaining power. And that's why you see pull and push, drop warrants of the four, the four of the ICC warrants. Because most people now think if you hand over by Islamic or by, by the Arab uh, culture, you are handing over Bashir over to the ICC. We should stop ICC from poking underneath the Americans are seeking for ICC to catch Bashir. So this is why this peace process cannot take off because the side that has bashir says if we you don't do these things quietly i've been here investigatively seeing what listening to what is going on and what is making this peace process not workable diplomatically we have failed we don't have enough clout as africans we don't have enough sound the delegations that we have sent in are weak they don't push they are not pushing the, the generals to come. They have not given the enough incentives to the generals to come on table. Therefore, we must increase the pressure diplomatically and even say deterrent. If you are not coming, we shall take measures because the people are dying. We cannot wait any longer. So diplomatically, we have those hitches. We have hitches of the generals not wanting certain people. Igad was, was targeted. Because IGAD has got some members in IGAD that support one side. So such a group should stay out and be just a facilitator and allow the mediators to do the job. Okay, Mr. UAE Matanga. Was, was also cited. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Matanga, let's uh, uh, wrap up uh, with humanitarian aid, uh, which is, you know, the crux of our discussion this evening. What are some of the shortfalls or even drawbacks when it comes to funding and resources of these aid efforts and how can they be bridged? I have I have I've called on the Secretary General to call for a conference, a donor conference. Sudan needs a huge donor conference. Sudan needs African countries themselves to sit down. The African Union chairperson should call member states whatever little they have this first of ourselves as au have a donor basket that can help other african countries then we can seek more help from other places in the in the west in europe in america in china in russia or whatever but we are not doing it from the african point of view we have no donors in africa we have organizations agencies in africa that can donate whatever can be taken to Sudan. So we need a, an African donor conference held in Africa, in Addis Ababa. Let people put their $2 million, $1 million, half a million dollars. Let's see how much we can gov governize out of this and send to Sudan before we go outside. On international scene, Britain should lead the way. This is your colony, former colony. 
you have been so silent, Mr. Prime Minister. There are agencies of British in, in nature that should go in. We have Britain has always led the way on a humanitarian uh, level. Let many of the United Nations, let the, the British come in to help, to assist, and so that we don't rely on the huge money that is coming from the Gulf states. The syndrome of money is what is killing that okay. most of the parts of Africa, if you look at the wars in Africa. So right. a donor conference, first an African donor conference would do. Second, the United Nations should call another donor conference where right. people can donate. There are people who have money in the world, but yes, they want indeed, to go to uh, the moon. Mr. Matanga, well, uh, we do hope that uh, aid comes to uh, the people of Sudan as soon as possible. Thank you so much, David Matanga, African Affairs Analyst uh, from Geneva, Switzerland, for speaking to us on this. Thank you very much. God bless you all. And uh, keep going. This is very good for Africa. Thank Highlight the much, African sir. problems. Keep it going. Thank you very much, sir.